This is one of the most realistic and simple dry flies that you can possibly tie. We'll start off with some white thread. Snap the excess free, taking our tag end, folding it over on itself, and reattaching it to our hook shank. With this complete, we'll continue securing it tightly to the top side of our fly until we reach the bend of our hook, at which point we'll bring our thread forward and grab some microfibits, or as I prefer to use, some synthetic deer hair, as it has more than one use, and the tips can still be used on extremely small flies. For example, this fly that we're tying is a size 18. We'll snip three fibers free, and if you want it to look extra good, stack them up so we can ensure they're perfectly even and measure them to length. We want them to be just about the size of our hook shank. Transfer your measurement and secure it tightly in place to the top side of our fly. Once again, wrapping back towards our tail and snip the excess free. At which point, we'll grab our excess thread, folding it over so that the middle fiber goes in between them and the two outer ones fall on the outer side of either side of our thread loop. Pull it tight and make any tweaks as needed before securing it tightly using your thread. Snip your excess free, and once complete, your tail should look something like this, mimicking the three prawns of a mayfly. With this complete, we'll secure our tag ends and lay down a thread base for our following steps. We'll then grab some poly yarn. Here I'm using the color white, placing it horizontally onto the top of our fly. Secure it tightly in place with your thread, and use your thread to carefully position it so that they face out in opposite directions. Doing so by taking thread wraps in figure eight patterns, along with wrapping behind it, as well as in front of it, to help position it in place. Take your time with this, and if it starts to favor any which direction, undo some thread wraps and try again. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once happy, we'll bring our thread back to the tail and the finished product should look something like this. If you're happy with the results, we'll grab our two wings, pulling them backwards and measuring them to be about a hook shank in length. Snip the excess free in order to trim them perfectly to length so that either side isn't longer than the other. At which point we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'll be creating a sulfur done. However, remember, this is just a suggestion as this pattern can look great as a blue wing olive or a PMD. And the size and color is always up to you and what you're trying to imitate. We'll pull some dubbing free, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, building up a slight transition as we work up towards our wings, taking our time to not trap any beneath the dubbing. And you can always continue to tighten and add dubbing as needed, as starting out with less especially working with synthetic fibers, is always going to be easier than pulling some away. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll whip finish to hold it all together, snip our thread free, and this is a simple, yet extremely realistic looking mayfly spinner. While it may not look exactly realistic to us, its profile and the shadow it casts in the water almost perfectly imitates a mayfly spinner. And as far as fish are concerned, if you got the size right, they won't even tell the difference. I encourage you to try it in whatever size or color you tend to see mayfly spinners in, and you'll be sure to catch some fish. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.